You know, it surprises me how many people will buy trail cameras and they'll just grab whatever SD card is hanging beside the trail camera in the store or they'll order the cheapest one off of Amazon or whatever and most people don't realize that the quality of the photos that you're going to get on your camera, particularly video, is really dependent on having the right SD card and there's a lot of technical stuff related to SD cards that most people don't even consider and then if you're going to go a step above that you know we're talking trail cameras but if you really want to video your hunts and so forth if you ever want to get into HD which most of us are now and a lot of us are going to 4k you got to have the right SD card uh, let's talk that through a little bit um, let's help you understand the differences between SD cards and what you need to get the best video and photos that you can. Now, I have used these regular SD cards, class 4, for photos for quite a few years. And then as the cameras got better and as I started doing more video, I started having problems with the class 4 cards and I really started to realize that it wasn't a camera that when I would have an issue say I'd have a photo where the bottom half of the photo was gray or black um, and I would just started having struggles and the, and the video didn't turn out very good I had no idea that it was the SD card that was causing the problem but it was and so let's talk through the what these numbers and symbols on these SD cards mean and help you to understand what you need for the types of things that you want to get. The main thing is understanding these these symbols and uh, well you see the circle with a number in it and this is the class of the SD card okay they come in classes 2, 4, 6 and 10 and those are the right speeds and uh, a class 10 is the fastest of those and a class 10 equals an ultra high speed number 1 so if you see a U with a 1 in it then you're at class 10 ultra 1 and then the, the ultra high speed goes in, in either class 1 or 3 so there's two of those and then the video on most cards that you're going to use for video they will have a V on them and they come in classes V6, V10, V30, V60, V90 are the primary ones that we use although you can get up to holy smokes I don't even know what the highest speed you can get on them is but I've seen cards that will write 300 megabytes per second and they cost $250 a card but for most of us a 30 or 60 is primarily what we're what we're going to need that's 30 or 60 megabytes per second so you want a U3 V30 or a V60 if you're going to do videos and what happens if you don't have a fast enough video your camera might say it's 1080p full HD but if you don't have a fast enough card in there then you're not getting full 1080p HD and you're probably even having some frame drop if you're down in one of these like class sixes or something like that you're probably not even getting a, the full complement of frames okay so for the full HD the minimum you want to go with is a class 10 and uh, with a with a video symbol on it that says V10 and uh, then you're going to get the full HD 1080p video and you also have a fast enough write speed that if you ever catch something that you want to slow down into slow motion you know for me if you if I'm on a hunt I often use a trail camera as a second angle to get a, a, a second angle of the shot maybe well if you want to see an arrow flying through the air and you're going to slow it down into slow motion you got to have a very fast card that's writing that so that's pretty much on video but now even on photo there's some reasons that you want to have a little bit better quality SD card. For example, if you set your camera to take three pictures, bang, 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 most, most trail cameras these days give you an option for a burst mode. Well, the higher your megapixel is, the longer it takes to write to the card. So if you don't have a pretty fast card, you're not going to get the full burst mode because it, the camera's taking time between the photos writing to the card. So that's another situation where you probably want to get up in at least that class 10 so here's some other things just some basic things about SD cards that that you need to remember SD cards the more you use them they get fragmented shoot I pull a card and I'll go back to my uh, computer and sit down at my desk and maybe I'll have 600 
photos and videos on a card and I'll go through them all and I'll you know glance through the majority of them and then I'll probably pull maybe a dozen or something like that that I save and then I just delete the rest and put to put the card back in a, a box like this one here and take it out put it back in a camera and after you do that a few times your card is really fragmented and that also creates slower write speeds so it's not a bad idea to format your card once in a while and particularly whenever you get a new card or a new camera you should always format your card in the camera before you use it and a lot of times if you get a new camera um, you might think something's wrong with the camera because it's not taking pictures properly and it could just be that the card hasn't been formatted by the camera and they're not talking to each other as, as well as they could. <clears throat> a little bit about micro SD cards um, they're basically the same except they're a lot smaller they have the same classes and everything like that and and of course they're a lot smaller and and uh, so you got to use a really good quality card in a micro SD card too and uh, you know my, I got a drone that videos in 4k so I'm gonna have a real high quality SD card in there that's at least a V60 and uh, also use the camera that you're watching right now it's got a card that's a V90 in it. Now most trail cameras will accept cards up to 32 gigs. That's a lot of pictures. Uh, if you're running quite a bit of HD video then um, 32 gigs can probably fill up but in a lot of if you're just shooting photos with your camera and you put a 32 gig SD card in there the batteries are probably going to go dead before the card gets full that 32 gigs is the maximum of what most trail cameras will take different companies different uh, have different standards but uh, the, that's kind of what the majority is now uh, with the trail cameras that we have right now so the last thing I wanted to mention is where to buy SD cards now Amazon's a great place to buy SD cards if you're just pulling a card off the sh off the hanger uh, in a sporting goods store you're probably paying about twice as much for the card as you need to and car they just keep coming down in price you know if you're paying over ten twelve dollars for even a high quality trail camera type SD card you're probably paying too much cards like the SanDisk Ultra that I have right here this is a, a 80 megabyte per second 16 gig is the one I got in my hand I can buy those actually this 32 gig card right here I can buy those uh, online for um, less than seven dollars a piece I think the last time I ordered a dozen of them I paid $5.95 a piece for them uh, the place that I buy almost all my SD cards believe it or not the website is called everything but Stromboli I have no idea why the company is called that but if you google everything but Stromboli or bulk memory cards um, you'll find the, that's the best place to buy SD cards as far as uh, good fast shipping and uh, the best prices I've found. Now if you're just buying one card you probably can get it cheaper on Amazon or maybe about the same but if you're looking to buy a dozen or 25 or so at a time like I do then uh, this this business called Everything But Stromboli is uh, probably your best bet. So I hope that uh, answers your questions on SD cards. It really is important to uh, to use good cards and know what the uh, capability of the card is and a lot of I just really believe a lot of times people think that there's something wrong with their camera and the reality is they actually are just not using the card that uh, can perform the best in that camera so so if you have any further questions or comments uh, please just drop a comment below I'd be happy to have a discussion with you about this and uh, you know I don't know at all maybe you know more than I do on some of this stuff but please uh, comment and appreciate your being a subscriber and we will talk to you next week.